Hello. Full bellies? Tired? Ready to have a snooze? That's why they picked me. So let me tell you about this integrity and wisdom thing. My father was German Jewish, had a pressing reason to leave Germany in the late 30s. <coughs> um, fact. He started his business after the war in Scotland, so you might have noticed that my accent is not quite Australian, although I do carry an Australian passport. So, when I learned business at my father's knees, he said, son, two words, wisdom and integrity. Integrity works like this. If you make a promise, whatever that promise is, you have to keep it, even if it bankrupts you. The wisdom, don't make stupid <laughs> bloody promises. So let's talk about ethical behavior and the difference between morals and, and ethics. Let's not just confine it to business. Let's look inwardly at ourselves. Who's been lucky enough to be in a David Jones or whatever? Let's not pick on them in particular, any retailer. And the sales assistant, if you can find one, has um, <laughs> rung up the wrong amount in the till to your benefit. So it's like a $199 item and she rings it up for $149. Who's had that benefit? Keep your hand up if you gave them the 50 bucks. About half of you. Interesting. You know, the other thing that you need to know about me, and for that matter, Camille, we're actually um, partners in a frock business. And Camille being the woman of the partnership, she's out the back all the time doing the stitching and the seamstressing <laughs> things. Right? And I'm out the front. You know. I'm out the front selling to these wonderful ladies. And usually, they're the wrong shape for our frocks. It's a bit like me. I'm short for my weight. I keep, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so Camille is there adjusting these frocks. And one day, I'm out the front selling, and a perfect size 12 lady walked in. She selected a magnificent frock, $499. And even more unusually, she paid me with cash, five $100 bills. And I don't know about you guys, but if I get a $100 bill, I stay up all night looking at it. So I'm counting it into the cash register, and she's made a mistake. There's six of them. Now, here's my ethical dilemma, ladies and gentlemen. Do I share the profit with Camille? <laughs> it's all well and good to laugh at this, but you know, I had the misfortune to be in the UK last year. Uh, it's only a couple of months after the political furor came to, to light about all the, uh, the shenanigans, the unethical behavior that the politicians were, were perpetrating over there. And the thing that frightened me most about it, well, there was two things. One, they felt no remorse. And two, they were actually working within the rules. That's a fairly frightening thought. What they were doing was not illegal. Now, you and I both believe it was immoral, but it certainly was within the allowances that the British parliamentarians are allowed to have. Quite how you need 70,000 pounds sterling to put a floating duck pond on your castle's moat is a little bit beyond my understanding, but it was not an illegal act. The chairman of uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland, who wouldn't give his superannuation payout back, which I think was the, the value of it, was five years average UK salary, and he'd bankrupted the place. What the hell were they thinking giving him a payout? And he wouldn't then give it back. Sir Freddie was his name. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. And if I bring up names like Enron or HIH, you, you know what I'm talking about here, yes? 
right? all this unethical, horrid behavior. But it is unethical. It's not illegal. When you didn't give that extra $50 that you were undercharged back to David Jones, you were stealing. Isn't that unfortunate? And equally, when I didn't give that lady her $100 back, that was illegal. Not sharing it with Camille was immoral. Right? It's an interesting little juxtaposition here, yes? I don't want to have this talk be solely about business. I want you to look inwards to yourselves and think about what are the ethical standards against which you value your behaviors. You see, 400 years ago, um, Sheriff of Nottingham was a bad guy, and Robin Hood was out there uh, robbing from the rich and giving to the poor or whatever the song went. Now the challenge with that, Abraham Lincoln once said, you cannot make the poor richer by making the rich poorer. Isn't that interesting? Right? So the thing was that the Sheriff of Nottingham was a bad guy. Robin Hood was allegedly a good guy. But nobody knew about it. There wasn't a daily Nottingham news that was sending the information out there. As internet savvy people as you all are, you now believe yourselves to be educated consumers. Now, this is really important. When you go to have an interaction with a business or a government department, or whatever it happens to be, you believe yourselves to be educated consumers because you've researched it on the font of all knowledge, Google. So you actually go into that business, and this is controversial, trusting that business. Because you've done your research and you know that you can't be cheated. How does that sit with you? So the business already has your trust. And then what do the schmucks do? They lose it. You go in there trusting them because you're educated. And they're too stupid, too uncaring to think, wow, I've got to be honest with every potential customer, client, whatever you want to call it, because they're an educated consumer, and they go and do silly things. They ask you to press 17 buttons on the phone before you get to speak to a live person. Um, I won't mention the software company. I had a problem for which I get um, telephone support. And when I, and I, I can't remember how long the telephone support was, but I'd, over, I'd gone over that. And they wanted to charge me $5 for every three minutes of support. Now, I've got to tell you, I want phone sex for that amount of money. I don't charge five bucks for every three minutes of my time. So these businesses haven't recognized the value of you, the consumer. And you guys, as the consumer, haven't recognized the value of your suppliers. You've recognized the value of your knowledge because you're not educated consumers. How many of you know how much interest you're paying on your mortgage? Yeah. Think you got the best rate? I'll bet you there's two or three mortgage brokers in here who can get a, che a cheaper rate for you. But somehow or other, there'll be a hadn't, I shouldn't say this, there'll be a charge. I actually don't believe that there's much difference in all of those mortgages. I don't believe there's much difference between all the telephone plans that are out there or the Foxtel plans. Foxtel? Foxtel plans. I'm the bunny that just goes ahead and pays it. When I get angry enough, I stop paying it and I give them it back. But they have to make me angry because I already trust them because I don't think there's a difference. Because businesses today think that being cheap equates to being good business. Westpac yesterday announced that they're going to charge interest on the interest on your credit card. How does that work? 67 cents to carry interest on your credit card. 
How many of you will go through the rigmarole to change banks? Because we now have a privacy act that in the olden days, and you're all much younger than me, but in the olden days, you could go to the bank and say, I want you to close my account with that bank and move it over to this bank. And you didn't have to get involved in all the, the trauma involved in shutting down your bank account. You can't do that anymore. The Privacy Act doesn't allow it. And big business hides behind the Privacy Act. My partner and I have different surnames because we're not married. Hers is Brown, mine is Frankel. The telephone is in her name. When something goes wrong, if she's not there, I can't do anything about it. Duh! How stupid. I can't do anything. It's her house. I'm a kept man. But if something goes wrong, I can't go to council and get it fixed because of the Privacy Act. So my question to you all is, how will you measure your ethics? And let me explain to you what I believe ethics to be. Ethics are a standard. Any Rotarians in the room? Four-way test, it's a wonderful thing. That's a, that is a code of conduct. The Ten Commandments in the Bible is a code of conduct. So they are ethics. Morals are the behavior that we portray measured against that ethical standard, that code of conduct. Does that make sense? Right? So morals are behaviors, ethics are standards. There are a number of professions, accountants, lawyers, doctors, etc., who have a code of conduct for their industry, and they believe that makes them professional. It doesn't. There's a doctor in Brisbane right now being hammered because he didn't live up to the code of conduct. So just having a code of conduct doesn't make you moral. Does that land for you? Let me start to wind this up because I'm getting the evil eye from my business partner. And I'll give you that 50 bucks later. The fact is your ethical behavior is also dependent upon the circumstance that you are in. You know, I'm the son of a Holocaust survivor. It wasn't until I went to... And he didn't go to any of the camps. His survival instinct was so strong, he left his entire family and he was the only survivor. Can you imagine what that's like to walk away from your, your, your father and your mother and all of these sorts of things? But as, until I went to school, I didn't know that most people had a number on their arm. Then I discovered that that was the case. But I can't imagine what his ethical behavior would have been in the months of walking around Europe before getting to the UK to be safe. So there are times when your ethical behavior can be less than what we would like it to be. But it's never, never okay for those of us who live in a society like we live in to be unethical, whether you're a business, a consumer, or a government department. So my challenge for you, and I just received this email over lunch, and animals are always really um, important. A society is defined by its treatment of its own defenseless. Excuse, excuse the intrusion, but if you agree, please send a note of your own. Um, Dear Heather, I write in response to your puppy farm discussion paper, blah, blah, blah. Having spent many months as a regular volunteer for a dog charity organization that rescues dogs from death row, I write with a practical awareness of the realities of this nasty situation. If we think about what Seth Godden was saying this morning about how the San Francisco uh, RSPCA became a save dogs uh, scenario. We have a, a puppy thing here in, in it's, as far as I know, it's only in Sydney and it's called, uh, no, she hasn't got her thing on there. Puppy Farm, uh, RSPCA Puppy Farm. And they, what they're doing is they are forcing dog breeders to get a tax number so that they can find out where they're selling the dogs so that they can find out where the animals are being mistreated. So society is measured by how it treats its defenseless. None of us believe ourselves to be defenseless because we're educated. And yet, 
companies and politicians keep trying to cheat us. We need to start a movement. We need to start a tribe. We need to make it clearly understood that unethical behavior at any level is not acceptable. So next time you're undercharged for something, please give them back their money. But equally, make sure that you get the value that you're paying for. Because if you're a business person and you act ethically, your customers will come back to you again and again. Yeah? I don't have anything else to say to you. Be ethical. And thank you for listening. Thank you.